Tech Week out, folks. Uh, this is about your homework on Section 1-6, for which, to my thinking, this is by far the hardest section, which is where you are showing or basically proving algebraically whether or not a function is one-to-one. -one. Okay? And the one I worked in class is right here, number 53. This is the one I messed up on third period and went back and made you guys a video fifth period. I just want to go ahead and work some of the other ones here just to make sure you see them all in a little bit more um, positive light and really just to know they're not that hard. So let's look first at 49, okay? Number 49, f of x is 3x plus 4. The definition algebraically of 1 to 1 is that if f of a is equal to f of b, which is basically just saying if I get the same y value by plugging in a that I get by plugging in b, then that means a and b have to be the same. Okay? So in other words, if we start with this, we should end up by concluding down here that a is equal to b. So let's check it out. Let's plug in a into our f of x function. We have 3a plus 4 over 5 equals, plugging in b, 3b plus 4 over 5. All right, first thing I would do here is probably multiply both sides by 5. Makes sense. Times 5, times 5. Remember, that's times 5 over 1. Okay, so that's really only being multiplied in the numerator, and these cancel. So now I have 3a plus 4 equals 3b plus 4. So we're on the right track, getting closer. Now I can subtract 4 from both sides. So minus 4 minus 4 gives me 3a equals 3b. And last but not least, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I have shown that when this is true, it leads to this being true. Another way of putting that, remember, is when my y values are the same for two different values of x, that it turns out really they're not two different values of x, they're the same value of x. Okay? So if I get the same y value, it's because I plugged in the same x value. I'm not going to plug in two different values of x and get the same y value. Number, let's look at 55. 55. f of x equals the square root of the quantity 2x plus 3. Okay? So I want to see if f of a is equal to f of b, if that necessarily means that a is going to be equal to b. So let's plug in a. and b. And the first thing I would do here is I would square both sides. So this gives me 2a plus 3 and this gives me 2b plus 3. And then I subtract 3 from both sides and I get 2a equals 2b and once again it's going to get me to the idea, this gives me the conclusion, that a is equal to b. So if the two y values are equal it's because the two x values were equal. All right, let's do number, how about number, um, let's see. Let's look at number 51, okay? 51, f of x equals one over x squared. So f of a being equal to f of b implies that one over a squared equals one over b squared. So I'm going to solve that proportion the way I like to solve proportions, which is cross multiplying. So 1 times b squared equals 1 times a squared. So that's what I have. Now when I take the square root of both sides, anytime you take the square root of both sides, you have to do a plus or minus. Okay? Really, we only have to do a plus or minus on one of them. Okay? Because, basically, if I have... Let's just use this as an example. Plus or minus this equals plus or minus this. You've got four options. Either this is plus and this is plus, which means they're the same sign. Great. If this is minus and this is minus, they're also the same sign. So again, it doesn't matter if they're both minus or both plus. They're the same sign. Because if they were both minus, you could divide both sides by negative 1. The other possibility is this is plus and this is minus or this is minus and this is plus, meaning they have different signs. So by doing this, I've covered both of those possibilities. 
either b is equal to positive a or b could be equal to the opposite a of a, negative square root of a squared. Well, if that's true, that's not the same thing as a equals b. So what I've shown here is that the fact that f of a equals f of b does not necessarily lead to this. It could lead to this. All right, so let's see if that actually matches. I don't know why my doc cam likes to do that, but it takes a little break every once in a while. Let's see if that actually matches what I see on the graph. And my screen is kind of weird for some reason. Here's what I get when I graph that. Oh, let's see. I'm going to look and see if I can find the right angle. There's got to be an angle that's going to make this work. There generally is. Can't see it very well. Okay. Here's what I get when I graph that. <laughs> looks like this. All right. A little more symmetrical than I just drew it, but it looks like that. That's a function. Sure. Passes the vertical line test, but does it pass the horizontal line test? No. Not at all. So it's not one-to-one, -one. or in other words, its inverse is not a function. So this should not be one-to-one, -one. so it makes sense that when I plug this in, I didn't necessarily get that b had to be equal to a. I also got another, opportunity, uh, another possibility. So this one is not one-to-one. -one. All right, now, now that I've shown you all of those, and I really wanted to show them to you before I told you this, because I wanted you to see that it's not as intimidating as doing that problem made it seem. That problem was just a little bit messier because it was squared. But um, in terms of it was a square of a binomial, actually it was made, made it a little bit more messy too. Um, but all of the problems are like that aren't necessarily as intimidating. And really all you're doing, the big idea here, is you're plugging in an a and a b into the function and seeing if you can simplify it to show that a equals b or not. Because that's the definition of algebraically speaking, of one-to-one. -one. Now that I've said all of that, um, it's entirely possible that we're not going to have to have any like that on our quiz. So check back if you are looking later at um, E-class. I may end up asking you to, um, I don't know, omit those problems as a strong word just because you can learn something from them. But we may end up ending up saying that there are not going to be problems like 47 through 58 on your quiz on Friday. So that would be nice. One more thing I want to tell you about the homework. On 69 through 78, you're basically experimenting with limiting that domain because like for instance here, not one to one. But what if I limited the domain? What if I said when x is greater than or equal to zero? Now it actually would work because if I have x is greater than or equal to zero only, I have this. And that passes both the vertical and the horizontal line tests. So on those problems, which are, again, 69 to 78, you're talking about how could I limit the domain to make it work. There are a lot of different possible answers, and the easiest way to do it is just use your graph. Don't try to do anything algebraic on those. All right, see you tomorrow.